Lucia and I had had a little discussion about what was going on, and I had sat down to write up the blog part of our, you know, our our newsletter, and it's like all about intensity. And right after I'd finished writing it, I get Lena's thing. <laughs> The theme for April 2014 is intensity. Mm. <laughs> so I thought, okay, well, that's confirmation. We are all perceiving it the same way. Yeah. Yes. So it is. Yeah. It, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, well, I was thinking about something. I, I think Leslie said it um, maybe on a retreat in South Africa or something. At some point I heard her reference this and I've always remembered it. But she said, you know, the the thing is that you get, you will, you will only go off balance if you get swept up in the emotional content of what's going on. So if there is a tsunami, for example, and you watch lots of footage of the tsunami and people in pain and people crying and having a huge emotion, emotional response to things, then that that sweeps us up into um, the pain of it and the emotion of it. But really, if you pull back and remember that, you know, those people collectively chose to have a natural disaster occur, that was a collective decision for that area of the world. And we pull every experience we have. Um, and, And you stay you know, apart from the emotion, then you're you're really kind of riding above it. And you can ride out a um a time like the one we're in and moving into more easily. So just to watch your own re- watch your own emotions because those are really just reactions to the reactions that people are having, right? <laughs> so that means there's something there in us to look at and process. Um does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also the the other part, the other aspect to that, gosh, I was just talking about this with somebody. I can't remember what situation, but the other aspect, of course, is that our media, which is really all about selling stuff, <laughs> advertising time, ratings, plays on that. So whenever there's any kind of natural disaster or, uh, you know, worldwide phenomenon, economic, potential economic collapse or whatever it is, uh, it's always skewed. And, and it's a lot of manipulation, basically. So that even stirs the pot. It stirs the pot even more you know, when it comes to that. And, you know, it's funny because wh- – I do remember, I think, you know, Lucia, that was when we we came here in the year 2000, and there was a huge storm going on, and uh, Mozambique, which is the country right next to South Africa, was having Mm -hmm. just amazing flooding. And I think that was the circumstance that this came up in. This was a situation like where there was a woman who was giving birth to a baby, and she was in a tree Mm -hmm. (laughs) in order to be up out of the flood, and it was... uh, it was very, very intense, but we've had many more, even more intense situations than that since that time. And it does appear to be a feature of the world that we live in right now, that there are uh, lots and lots of major types of phenomenon going on. And um, it doesn't mean that you harden your heart and you don't care and all of that. But uh, the thing that what I remember she once said to me um, that has stuck with me along these same lines. In fact, I reminded her of this recently because she needed to be reminded of it. Um, even if you're in the midst of, you know, really difficult stuff of your own personal stuff as well. Um, I think she was going through some difficult process for the collective or something, and somebody was being, oh, so kind and coddling and, you know, oh, poor you. And she just said, wait a minute, you don't understand. (laughs) I may be going through this, but there's another part of me that never loses the transcendent. And there's another part of me that is completely untouched. And that's really 
there's a capacity, that's that capacity to be in the world and not of it. You're in the world, you do care about things happening to people, but you're not yanked around by it. You're not thrown off your center. And if you can maintain that center, and particularly into that connection with your transcendent being, you are much more capable of helping you know, doing something that actually alleviates the situation than you are when you get all caught up in it. So that's what I've never forgotten. <laughs> like, you know, I kind of put that person who was poor leslie her <laughs> right in their place because, mm-hmm. you know, and I remember Rama used to say similar things, um, you know, yes, my body hurts right now, but you don't understand. I live in this world that's so beyond the pain of the body doesn't even reach me. Mm. So it's good to remember that when we're facing times of such intensity as we have right now. Yeah, and it's experienced in a really personal way. I was sitting meditating this morning and for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, just feeling all these churning emotions and oh, I'm not happy, and what do I want to do with my life, and I have no direction. And then, and after that time, I just went, yeah, but you know, this is not me. <laughs> this is what's happening in the collective that I am picking up. And we're all psychic. Uh, in the academy, if you're drawn to study at the academy or a similar institution, you're more psychic than most people. And so that means we're very, very sensitive and we feel what the collective is going through. But it's good to remind ourselves just to step back and say, well, yeah, I do feel it and I'm going to continue to feel it. I'll feel it even more this month if things ramp up. But it's not me. And that immediately severs, you know, then you immediately flip back in the witness and go, oh, oh, okay. So it's uncomfortable now and it may not feel good now may not feel good in the immediate future, but this is just life on planet Earth. We're just going through a transition, and it's very intense. It's like somebody turned up the dimmer switch from 100 watts to 1,000 watts. Mm-hmm. That's the difference in the intensity of the energy that's coming into us right now. Solar energy, whatever. It's just pure energy. And so the thing is, is if if you can, and everybody here has the tools, the capacity with your ability to witness, the processing tools, the meditations, the energy of the spiral itself, uh, we can actually take this energy and really dance with it, really let it spin us up. But if you're um, not prepared, it can be, uh, it can just feel like dead weight, you know, just kind of crushing you. So that's why she was calling it like uh, surfing the pipeline, right? <laughs> yeah. You're either you're right smooth in the middle of that pipeline, or what? What was the what's the surfing term when you wipe out or something? Yeah, I wipe out, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. it's great, actually. It's very exciting for us, um, and it's also a perfect time for our, for our theme for the month <laughs> because you have to be really present <laughs> mm. for this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There's one more piece I wanted to add and it's just a very, um, you know, um, physical strategic piece. <laughs> uh, it's just a time to be careful physically. You know, I mentioned briefly at the activation of wonder that I spun out here in my car and um, and it was pretty. It could have been pretty serious. It could have gone off the mountain. I could have gone right into a car because the the car I hit some loose gravel on the road and it was going around a curve and it just completely spun me over to the other side of the road. And so two things about that. One is uh, it really caused me to slow down and go. Okay, physically things are playing out in the physical for people and you really have to be careful at a time like that and the other thing is that I um, I I was very pleased with my reaction to it because there wasn't a reaction 
And the first thing was, okay, let's get the car to a safe location. Let's check to make sure the other two people in the car are okay. Now let's see if, what the damage was. And, and I drove home, but I drove home more slowly. And as soon as I got home, I said, okay, what was that about? You have to do that. If there's a big reaction or a big spin out in the physical, there's something, there's some message there, there's some correction that's happening. And that one was small, and the next one would be larger. And if I didn't know that, or if I didn't have the humility to sit down and examine my awareness field, and what was happening was I had had to, you know, in, in Ecuadorian South American style, I had just had to wait one hour. It was supposed to be five minutes, and I had had to wait one hour for my worker and his wife to give them a lift back from the city where we go shopping to Vilcabamba in 45 minutes. And I, was, I wasn't I was angry. I was just a little pissy. Mm. And I went, okay, that attitude has to go. I know that attitude in myself. And I know enough to control it and not get angry or not get frustrated. But it's just this subtle undercurrent of, you know, why I'm really tired and I want to go home now. And so that has to, I've got to check that. So we just need to look at these things coming up now and in the coming months as um, beacons saying, whoa, look here, this needs to be adjusted. And these things can be adjusted really easily now. That energy of spin out that's so strong can be taken to make a correction that is equally strong internally. And you can correct something like that. You can look at it. Merge with it, process it very quickly. So just a word of advice on the physical. You know, there was an expression that Rama used to use. I think it's really applicable at this time, and that is you don't have latitude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if something happens, mm -hmm. you, you have to look at it right away because if there's anything at all that's torqued just a little bit in your attention, it's going to manifest really quickly. Mm -hmm. And, of course, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it's a it's it's a it's a time where we just have to be really um, really in observer in observer mode as much as possible and get right back in it if something happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it wasn't yeah. only for intense times. I mean, Rama used to say, you know, as mystics or occultists, we use that word synonymously, but he said occultists don't bump into people. If you bump into somebody in a crowded area, he said, you better stop and take a look <laughs> because your energy field is more sensitive than that. You should never bump into anything. <laughs> so, um, and, yeah. and yeah, he was just saying during intense times, I'd forgotten that phrase, but you don't have any latitude. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because other oh. times you could bump into something and get away with it, but now you can't. Right, right. And I think uh, because humanity is is uh, speeding up in vibration so rapidly at this point, because that's what this energy does if we let it, um, you know, it's not going to get, it's not going to slack off and we're going to be able to go back to being able to bump around. No, no, no. <laughs> this is the way we're going because... Um, it's just going to continue to, we're going to continue to speed up in vibration. And this ascension process is really real. It's really happening. Mm -hmm. So I think the days of latitude are way in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. 